Amen. If you have your Bibles with you, you can be turned to the Gospel of Luke. The Gospel of Luke chapter 1. While you're turning there, uh, again, remember the church. Uh, remember me always as your pastor that I'd be found preaching what the Lord would have me to preach. The Gospel of Luke chapter 1 in the very first verse. The Gospel of Luke chapter 1 in the first verse. The Bible says, For as much as many have taken in hand to set forth in order a declaration of those things which are most surely believed among us, even as they delivered them unto us, which from the beginning were eyewitnesses and ministers of the Word. It seemed good to me also, having had perfect understanding of all things, from the first to write unto thee in order, most excellent Theophilus, that thou mightest know the certainty of these things, wherein thou hast been instructed. There was in the days of Herod the king of Judea a certain priest named Zacharias of the course of Abiah, and his wife was of the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. And they were both righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord blameless. And they had no child, because Elizabeth was barren, and they were both now well stricken in years. And it came to pass that while he executed the priest offices before God, the priest office before God, and the order of his course, according to the custom of the priest office, his lot was to burn incense when he went into the temple of the Lord. And the whole multitude of the people were praying without at the time of the incense. And there appeared unto him an angel of the Lord standing at the right side of the altar of the incense. And when Zechariah saw him, he was troubled, and fear fell upon him. But the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zechariah, for thy prayer is heard, and thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name John. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we thank You for Your goodness. We thank You for Your many uh, blessings that You give us on a routine basis. Lord, the ones that we see. Lord, the ones that we fail to see. God, we need Your help this morning. We need Your strength to preach. We pray that You prepare the hearts of those that are listening. We need to be uh, plugged into You this morning, Lord, and that we might know what's uh, being taught, that You'd send the Holy Spirit this way, and uh, that we might understand and know Your will. God, we pray that You'd help our people together and help us. We pray these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, I'll be preaching on the fact that God answers prayers. Now, very frequently when we pray, uh, we don't pray sincerely. Uh, very frequently when we pray, it is out of routine. Yeah. And I'm just asking this morning, how many of you prayed uh, before we arrived here? Yeah. How many people were prepared spiritually uh, for what we're going to do uh, this morning? Uh, meet with the Lord and, and talk of His goodness and greatness. Uh, things like that, if they're done properly and correctly, uh, it takes prayer. It, it takes being plugged into the Lord God. Now, uh, one thing we'll have to say about prayer before we get started, that it's not... It's not vain repetitions. Be very careful of breaking into a, a routine of what you always say in praying because the Lord warned us of that, that that was not to be our situation. But our prayer was to be deeper than that and have more strength. Now, I also want you to see that when you pray, when you're done, always evaluate have you heard from God. Now, the fact that you hear from God does not mean that you get what you want. Right. If you want a red convertible and you pray and at the end you don't get one, that does not mean you were or were not plugged in with God. Uh, it just means you didn't get a red convertible. But when you're done praying, have you spent time with the Lord? Because that's really the whole basis of prayer is that we are more connected to the Lord God. Now, uh, we're going to read about this prayer of Zechariah, so I'm not going to rehearse the first uh, four verses because it was just... Uh, I will say this, though. If you want a good, orderly gospel in the events that happened to our Lord's ministry, Luke's is good for the order that it's laid out because Luke was a physician. 
And physicians and nurses both think about logic. You know, when I used to teach, and I, you know, the young girls would tickle me because they would, you know, they would big flowery statements, I feel, and she thinks. I'm like, well, how do you know what she thinks? You don't know what that woman's thinking. I don't care what you feel. I want to know what happened. What do what you see? What did you do about it? That's all I want. And see, Luke was like that. He didn't care what people felt. He just wanted a chronological event of how they happened in the Lord's life. And, and so, the first part just kind of begins the, when the ministry of John occurred. Now, in verse 4, that thou mightest know the certainty of those things wherein thou hast been instructed. To be, in other words, be sure that, that these are truths come from God. Verse 5, and in, those, and in the days... There was in the days of Herod, the king of Judea, a certain priest named Zacharias of the course of Abiah, and his wife was of the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. Now, I want you to see, as he's beginning to identify them, uh, he gives a little bit of each of their genealogy to show that they were Jews to show that uh, they were in line to hear from God, that, that Zacharias was doing the very thing that, 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 his, uh, that his lineage called him to do. And then in uh, verse uh, huh, then in verse 6, and they, both, and they were both righteous before God. Now that's a wonderful statement because you'll find really you have no prayer life if you're not right before God. See, when it, when it said righteous, they were doing what they knew to do, and it was important for them enough for Zacharias to give up all that he routinely did and go down to the house of God three months out of the year and execute this office like he had done probably by this point for 70 years. That he would still get up and he would still go do it and he would still complete it. See, they had a testimony. So if you're not righteous in the sense that you're not right with God, how is your prayer life? See, a lot of times uh, uh, you measure your feedback on your prayer in the wrong way. We need to ne never be guilty of, bra uh, uh, of measuring its effectiveness by results. Now notice in verse 7, And they had no child because Elizabeth was barren, and they were both now well stricken in years. Now, uh, Zechariah somewhere along the way had prayed a prayer for a son. Now we don't know when that occurred. It really doesn't say. Did he pray it recently? Because there, there's one or two things that he liked faith. One or two things happened. He either prayed when he was old and said, Lord, give me a son, and didn't believe God was going to do it, or he prayed it so many years ago he forgot that he had prayed it. Yeah, you know what? Have you ever forgot that you prayed something? Now, I don't know which was the case uh, there with Zacharias, and I guess we'll never really understand and know that, but either way, there was, there was a disconnect in time. You know... Uh, it takes a while sometimes. And really that's where your faith is measured. If you have a dear, a dear one who's lost and on their way to hell, keep praying for them. Uh, keep putting them before the Lord. And you know, you say, well, I've been praying for them for 20 years. Pray 20 more. Be, be faithful in that. So we're not real sure exactly uh, how long he'd been praying, but I do want you to know this. He was faithful and when he saw that there was a problem, they didn't have a child, he perceived that as a problem and he prayed for it. You know what? Today, when we see a problem, uh, we don't even perceive it to, you know, that it's a matter of prayer. He saw a problem, there was no son, there was no lineage, there was nothing to issue from, and so he prayed about it. What about you? When you see a problem uh, with, your, with, with, with your workplace, do you pray about it? When you see problems with your children, do you pray about it? That was Zacharias' mind. And they had no child because that Elizabeth was barren, and they were both well now, they both were now well stricken in years, and it came to pass that while he executed the priest's office, 
before God in the order of his course, according to the custom of the priest's office, his lot was to burn incense. So he was at the altar of incense when he went into the temple of the Lord, and the whole multitude of the people were praying without at the time of incense. And there appeared unto him an angel of the Lord standing on the right side of the altar of incense. Now, so he goes in, he's doing his routine thing, and uh, when we studied the, 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 the tabernacle, and it, it, the, the altar of incense was before the Holy of Holies, he went in there to do it, and he's doing it, and an angel appears. Now, what would you do if an angel appeared? You think he was shocked? You think he was taken back a little bit? Do you, you, you think, you know what? Sometimes I think we're shocked when we hear from God. Yeah. I, I think he was blown away. And, and you know, uh, uh, he ought to have been, because we're dealing with the very same God, he ought to have been blown away. But you know, as, as I was studying this to see a, a deity right before me, Gabriel came down and said, Listen, this child's coming. And huh, you know what the Bible says concerning angelic beings today? Last thing says, Hebrews chapter 5, ye have entertained angels unaware. So the next time you slam the door in somebody's face, you remember that. Because that, 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 that is what the Bible says. And, and so he's, he's praying in what should have been a miraculous thing, and because he was like us and we are like him, Zechariah was, was blown away. And there appeared unto him an angel of the Lord standing on the right side of of the altar of incense, and Zacharias saw him, and he was troubled, and fear fell upon him. Now, uh, what about you? Do, you? do you fear the things of God? Now, we all need a healthy fear of the Lord God, but if an angel appeared, wouldn't you be especially blown away? That's the nature of man, is not uh, that things that we see and perceive all of a sudden, whoo! Man, I can't believe this. See, Zacharias was no different. Um, when you look about all the things that's happening in the modern day, uh, for God's people, fear should not be the result. Yeah. But it is. And, and, and so we see uh, that Zacharias makes this up. Uh, unbelie this unbelievable thing happens in his life, and he's been praying. And he's unsure about it. Verse 12, And when Zechariah saw him, he was troubled, and fear fell upon him. But the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zechariah, for thy prayer is heard. And thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name John. Now, I want you to see two things. First of all, again, I don't know how long he'd been praying, if he'd give up praying, or what the problem was there. But he says, You're going to, you are going to have that son, and don't name him Zacharias Jr. I want you to name him John. His name is going to be called John. And, and you know, what, what a wonderful thing. Now you think about that, and I think it was Sarah was teasing me and Donna about having another child. And listen, that would be a Zacharias thing. Uh, if, if, if one come, we would just say, Glory be to God. But you know what? Me and Donna's past that. Uh, that, 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 I, I say that and then we got Bella, but um, uh, that had to be a shock, didn't it? That had to be unbelievable. Or, the flip side, he was still praying. See, our God does things differently. And, and you know, I, I would love to know was he praying at 90 for another child? I don't know. And so we see as the Lord's people then that when you pray something, the first thing, you remember this, that our God is able, He's effective, He's strong, and He can do it. Nothing is outside the scope of His ability. So uh, don't be shocked when it happens. Now I want you to see in verse 14. And thou shalt have joy and gladness, and many shall rejoice at His birth, for he shall be great in the sight of the Lord, and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink, and he shall be filled with the Holy Ghost, even from his mother's womb. 
Now, I want you to see that this, that this uh, uh, turned true just a very uh, a little time after that when, when Mary went up to Elizabeth because they were cousins. And Mary was uh, a child of the Holy Ghost and it was carrying the Lord Jesus. And, and, and then uh, Elizabeth was mu about six months further along carrying John and said the baby leaped in her womb at the, at the news that Jesus was on His way. See, He was filled with the Holy Ghost even from the womb, rejoicing that it was to be so. And we see that Zacharias is getting all this information firsthand. He, he's getting it... <laughs> He's getting it before it happens. It, it, it's an end of prayer. It, 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 you know, he, he was plugged in. He, he was listening to the Lord God. He, 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 was, uh, he, was, uh, he, was going, he, he was wanting to know what the Lord had. Verse 15. Uh, verse 16. And many of the children of Israel shall, be turn, shall turn to their Lord their God, and He shall go before Him in the spirit of the power of Elias, to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children, the disobedient to the wisdom of the just, to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Verse 18, here comes the doubt. And Zechariah said unto the angel, Whereby shall I know this? See, nothing is really very, nothing is ever quite good enough for this flesh, is it? If you saw an angelic being declaring that you were going to have a, have a son at this age, you would think enough would be enough, but no, no. And you know, sometimes because of Satan and the way that he works, we begin to doubt too. We begin to say, what am I doing? Is this really how it's going to go down? And when you have a situation like that, just pray to the Lord. Ask Him to improve your faith. So we find that instead of rejoicing, that Zacharias rather begins questioning uh, when will this happen? When, 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 what, how do I know this is going to be? And Zechariah said unto the angel, Whereby shall I know this? For I'm an old man, and, and my wife well stricken in years. And the angel answering and said unto him, I am Gabriel, huh, that stand in the presence of God, and am sent to speak unto thee, to shew these, these glad tidings. And behold, thou shalt, thou shalt be dumb, and not able to speak into the day that thou hast to, to, until the day that these things shall be performed, because thou believest not my words, which shall be spoken in their season. Now, we know the rest of the story happened just that way. And have you ever, have you ever thought that maybe you would be that about like Zacharias? That you'd have to be made dawn? That, that he had to take your ability, your ability to speak? So you see the effectiveness of prayer was a long time coming, at least in man's eyes. Uh, sometimes uh, prayer is a test of your faith. Um, sometimes prayer is uh, an illustration of your faith. Do you really believe that He is able? Do you really believe that He accomplishes exactly what He, uh, what he says? Look at me in 1 Kings chapter 9. 1 Kings chapter 9. We'll begin reading in uh, the very first verse. First Kings chapter 9. In the first verse, the Bible says, And it came to pass when Solomon had finished building the house of the Lord and the king's house and all Solomon's and all Solomon's desires, which he was pleased to do, that the Lord appeared to Solomon the second time as he appeared unto him at Gibeon. Now, I want you to see that uh, if you remember the first time that, that they had their encounter, what God said to Solomon was this, I'll give you anything you want. And if you follow that text, he's about 12 years old at the time. And he says, what I want is wisdom because I've got this great nation to lead and I don't know how to lead a nation. I don't understand where the wisdom might come from. He says, just, I just need some wisdom to lead. And because of that, in addition to the wisdom, God granted him great riches. And that, that was not what he asked for at all. And here we find several years later that he is praying again. You know, um, 
Just keep praying. The best we know that this is the only, the only two times they actually ever met together. That they actually, you know, um, I don't think that we have effective prayer nearly as much as we think we do. Now, one thing you better to know that you've been connected at least once, because if you've not been ever plugged in, if you've not ever prayed and, and felt and, and felt that you uh, knew the Lord and heard you, you've probably never been saved. Yeah. Because uh, confession is the result of salvation. Did you know that? Right. When He makes you alive again, when He creates something new in you, the natural result is going to be to confess Him and, and, and to uh, and to pray. Now, since then, how's your prayer life been? How many times have you been close to Him? See, uh, a prayer life, a good prayer life, is a is a complete ref reflection of who you are. Verse three, and the Lord said unto him, I have heard thy prayer. So it doesn't say what the prayer was, except that one prayer where he said, I'd just like to have some wisdom. We don't know. But so, somewhere in this long expanse of time, and it took seven years to build the temple, and 14 years to build Solomon's palace, 21 years. That's a long time. 21 years ago, I was 27 years old, and, and, and my kids were like this. Look at it now. That is a long time just to keep praying and to keep praying and keep praying. But that is what we are called to do. Listen, we need to just be plugged in and, and, and pray. Pray for the lost. Pray for the church. Pray the Lord would uh, be lifted up in what we do. I, and the Lord said to him, I've heard thy prayer and thy supplication." Now, I've taught and preached on that a lot in the last 20 years. Have you supplicated our Lord today? Remember I told you what that was, didn't I? Yeah. It's not asking for something. You're mighty and merciful and honorable and holy and righteous in all things you do well. Florida getting slammed this morning. All I can say is God does all things well. Amen. You give Him, you give Him praise and glory and honor. That supplication. And so we find that really, our, our the kinks of our prayer life is this: is giving Him praise. We praise you for who you are. We praise you for being on the throne. We praise you for being high and lifted up. We praise you that, that oh, come what may, you're in full control. We lift up your name this morning. You're holy and righteous and good and, 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 and just supplicate for who He is. So all along these years, apparently Solomon had been doing exactly that. And the Lord said to him, I've heard thy prayer and thy supplication and thou, that thou hast made before me, I have hallowed this house. Now, as the nails were being driven in, his prayer was, Lord, you meet with us there. What's something to be, what, what does it mean to be hallowed? Very similar to holy, set apart. All on the way, Lord, you meet with us here. You come down, and you know what? The Bible says that the glory of God did come down and rest into the house, just like. But it was a matter of prayer. When we were building this little building, was that your prayer? As we was dread, or, or was it just the fact that we were going to have a new building to stay in? No, what, what we needed was to pray that God might show up somewhere along the way. And so all through that time of prayer, all that time of preparation, all that time of building, we find that Solomon had bathed in prayer. And, and I often wonder how much of that do we do in preparation for a Sunday morning or a Wednesday night? How do we bathe myself in prayer and, and Adam and Brother Junior to prepare in the way that we should? That is the, that's the preparations that need to be made. And that is an effective prayer life. He says, I've hallowed this house which thou hast built to put my name there forever. And my eyes and my heart shall be there perpetually. In other words, I'll be there forever. So be, be, be patient 
Be calm in your prayers. 2 Kings chapter 20. 2 Kings chapter 20, the very first verse. And in those days was Hezekiah sick unto death, and the prophet Isaiah, the son of Amos, came to him, and said unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Set thine house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. Um, <laughs> that's delivering the news as it is, is it not? You know what? I got news for you. Every one of you are going to die. Yeah. Every one of us is going to die. Death is a certainty. And listen, don't start chronologically aging everybody in here. Uh, Brother Junior, the youngest, and my grandson, uh, I mean the oldest, and my grandson down to the youngest because it doesn't work that way. If life's taught me anything, it's taught me that, that you can't predict who's going to die by their age. But I can tell you this, just as Hezekiah got this from Isaiah the prophet, I give it to you this morning. You're going to die. Death is an appointment that you must keep. And you know what? You'll keep it wherever you're at or whatever you're doing. The, the question is this. Are you, are, are, are you in a prayerful mind this morning? Because if, if you can pray... If you, if you have the ability to pray and have heard from God, then you're redeemed. And then if you sit there in the emptiness of yourself, then you need something desperately. And what you need is salvation. <coughs> what you need is the Lord. What you need is uh, 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 to know that you've been born again. And so we see that, uh, I don't know why it is, I guess because the frailty of the human heart and the frailty of the human mind is this, that some reason death seems to shake us up when nothing else will, will. So I'm telling you this morning that you're dying. Even as we speak, you're on your way out. You're going to die. You're going to be done with this place very, very soon. Even if you live another 80 years, listen, it's going to go like that and you're going to be done. So has come gets this news. Then he turned his face to the wall and prayed to the Lord, saying, Now, I want you to see, uh, you ever, ever had difficulty finding a private time to pray? I have. When you have as many children as we did, it's sometimes hard to find a little clock spot to get there. And his child uh, would be painted to and and if he was sick and the prophet came down and said, his kind of die. And you know what? He couldn't run down to the temple because he was too sick. So he just turns over toward the wall. Each of y'all can do that. Just look at the wall instead of looking at me. You know what? These are pretty walls, but they're pretty plain. Right? Yeah. You don't need nothing but that to pray to the Lord. I want to, I won't say the type of church it was, a different group <coughs> preached a funeral recently. And it was ornate. Some people even say it was captivating. But you know what? All it is is an empty wall. However, however plugged in you are, when you see something plain as this beige wall, is that, can, can, can you make a prayer time out of that? Because that is a measure of your prayer life. What did the Lord Jesus say? Go into that closet, and when I shut the door, pray like this. So that means that we don't need to be captivated by the world, and we don't need all these, uh, uh, you know, snuffers and all, all the stuff they had to have in the day in the times of Israel. We just need to be along with the Lord. So a good way to measure your prayer life then we find is how is it when there's nobody but you? You know what? I've heard some people make some pretty lofty prayers when called on to pray in a Sunday service. But a lot of times when, when those happen, I, I wonder what their private prayer life is all about. You know what? You can say pretty much anything, but it just don't make it so. And so we find that as Hezekiah really had no other choice 
but to get down where his prayer life was. I beseech thee, or I beg thee, O Lord, remember how I have walked before thee in truth and a perfect or a complete heart. Now, uh, listen, Hezekiah, well, there was no reason to justify himself to the Lord. But really, all Hezekiah was doing is saying, Lord, I've tried. I've tried. And I do want you to see that he does, gives us indication that your walk with the Lord does impact your prayer life. I've walked before thee. So if your main focus is not the Lord and your main focus is something outside here, whether it be uh, music or whether it be uh, your work job or whatever it be, or if it's something with this, constantly doing like this, whatever outside this it is, huh, you're not much like Hezekiah. Because he says, I've walked before you. I, I, I've been in the center of your will. I, I, I've done... Huh, Exactly what I knew to do. I, I beseech thee, O Lord, remember how I walked before thee in truth and a perfect heart and have done that which is good in thy sight. And Hezekiah wept sore. Now I want you to see that his prayer really wasn't that lengthy. It was just two sentences long. It was, But I want you to see that he cried his heart out before God. And you know what? It's a shame on us that it takes death to get a hold of our attention in that way. Right. Yeah. You know what? Uh, your prayers are impacted by your tears. They really are. See, uh, there's a whole lot of other things that breaks my heart more than death. It really is. It, it, it's, hey, listen, if you're ready to go home to be the Lord, there's a lot of things worse than death. Uh, so we, as the Lord's people, <laughs> need to measure our effectiveness of prayer by the number of tears that we, 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 we have cried. Verse 4, And it came to pass... Before Isaiah, uh, before Isaiah had gone into the middle court, that the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Turn again, tell Hezekiah, the captain of my people, thus saith the Lord, uh, the, God, the Lord, the God of David, thy father, I have heard thy prayer, I have seen thy tears. Behold, I will heal thee on the third day that I shall go up to the house of the Lord. And so, I want you to see uh, two things. Number one, prayer was effective. And really, God's plan was not thwarted or changed. Uh, this was a testing time for Hezekiah. Did you ever think about that? It really was. So when problems come your way, do you pray or do you wring hands? When difficulty comes your way, do you flee or do you stay? Because really, that, that, that's essential to your spiritual life is... What happens when the storm comes? When difficulty comes on the way, what is your natural response? Because you know what? Things are not easy and things are going to get worse. Yeah. Uh, you know what? I've not seen things improve in my 48, soon be 49 years. Have you? Me and Don talked about this several times. I remember when the first store opened up after service times in our little community back home, and you would think that Jezebel owned that, that store building. We, we expected it to just to spontaneously combust. And now look at what we've got today. Right? Things have waxed worse and worse. When men can, can marry men. When people can live as a citizen of our country and hate it at the same time, yeah. something is wrong. Yeah. Something is desperately wrong. And so we as the Lord's people need to understand that huh, effective prayer comes sometime in the face of hardship. And effective prayer sometimes comes when things get when things get rough. Second Chronicles. <laughs> 2 Chronicles chapter 11. 2 Chronicles chapter 11. 
I'm sorry, 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 11. 2 Chronicles 7, uh, verse 11. The Bible says, Thus Solomon finished the house of the Lord and the king's house, and all that came into Solomon's heart to make in the house of the Lord and in his own house and he pro that he prosperly effected. And the Lord appeared to Solomon by night and said unto him, I have heard thy prayer, and I have chosen this place to myself for a house of sacrifice. If I shut up heaven, that there be no rain, or if I command the locusts to devour the land, or if I send pestilence among thy people, if my people which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and I and heal and will heal their land. Now the first portion of this is exactly the, the Chronicles uh, recording of what we already read about Solomon uh, uh, in the in the other book, but I want you to see that he uh, we get more of what the Lord God said back to Solomon in this. If my people, you know what uh, the Lord's people is us. If my people, and you know what in that day the Lord's people was Israel. Today, the Lord's people are all the redeemed, all that have genuinely been saved by grace. If my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves. So we, he, we see a huge component of prayer and that is humility. Humility is not something most people like and it's what men like less. Men are not a humble creature. That's why instead of facing up to God, Adam hid from him. That, 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 that is how we're bent and how we're made. But if you want an effective prayer life, you'd better find humility. Yeah. If, you want, if you want to be able to pray and know when you've got up from the, from the spot that you've met with God, you've got to find some humility. You've got, you've got to be in an humble situation. There's, there, there's no room for pride in that place. And you know what? All I've seen among the Lord's people in recent times is this. If you've got a big sovereign grace Baptist all across the front of your building, listen, that's all it takes. But you know what? There's no humility in that. None whatsoever. And, and so we see then as the Lord's people that if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray, we already talked about pray, and seek my face. Now, another component with prayer is this. It's seeking the face of God. Yeah. You know, you can say anything, but spiritually do you seek it? It's one thing, Lord, I want you to be in my life more. You know what? That's just words. But does your, does your, does your heart get hungry for it? Just ache to be with you. See, that's when you're seeking, right? <coughs> Another thing about seeking is this. Whatever you find, that's enough. If I sought the Lord and said, Lord, uh, and we don't, but just say, me, Lord, me and Donna need a new house. And what I ended up with is a rusty single wide. What I've been saying, blessed be the name of the Lord. See, when you see and you look, you've got to be satisfied with what's fun. And we live in a day and age today where we're not satisfied unless we seek is what we wanted to start with. Yeah. So have you sought God this morning? Have you sought Him in what you do? Have you looked for Him? Have you, have you, have you said, God, I need to hear from You desperately this morning. I'm cold and I'm indifferent and I'm dry. I need to hear from You. Have you sought Him? Have you looked for Him? We as Lord's people, we need to go seeking the Lord. And, and, and certainly, huh, He'll be found of us. And turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. 
I'll give you one more illustration and we're going to be done. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, the captivity names of the three Hebrew children. Have you ever thought about their prayer life? Have you ever wondered, besides the physical events, what led up to them being tossed into the furnace? Because listen, when you're about to get thrown over the side, it, it's done too late to be plugged in. You see what I'm saying? If, 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 you know what? Uh, huh. I know they were ready, and I know that they had already made some preparation because they said, listen, we're not careful to answer you. Be it known unto thee, O king. <laughs> See, they, they, they were prepared to say, okay, you know what? <laughs> we're not going to bow. We're not going to do it. We're not going to kneel. Our God is the great God Jehovah, uh, uh, the, the, the creator of the universe. We're not going to get in front of a statue. We're not going to bow down. It's not going to happen. And the reason they were plugged in and the reason they were able to do that, they had been taught, they had been brought up, they had done refused that filthy Egyptian, I mean, Babylonian God. They didn't want any of it. And listen, that was some good stuff. They said, no, <laughs> we're going to take some, some good dried beans. You let us eat those, we'll be fine. Isn't it amazing what really led up to their strength <laughs> is what they ate. And you know what leads to your strength? What you eat. And I don't mean food. And listen, uh, I think my oldest, uh, he called me a name yesterday, something to do with Facebook. Junkie or addict or something like that. And you know what? <laughs> I can say to you, you know, I, I find myself doing this a whole lot. Well, you know what? There's no power in this. No. I'm not plugged in when I'm doing this. We need to know where our strength comes from. Because in that day, you're not going to be... You know what? You're not going to be able to text someone or game someone, whatever that is, and get, and get any kind of spiritual help. Do you ever think about that? The only, the only kind of spiritual your help you're going to get is from right up here. And the only way you get that is being to be plugged in by prayer. So how's your prayer life this morning? Are you near to Him? Are you close 